Hello, all you hardcore boxing fans out there. How are you doing? It's Big Porky here. Voice of hardcore boxing. You know when I'm still standing. You are. Right. Today, I'm joined by my good friend, Simon, from Bristol. Over to you, Simon. How are you? Yeah, good, mate. Good Plodding on with the lockdown. Good to get to the end of the week and... Uh... Yeah, have our own little Friday night fight night discussion. Yeah, uh, straight away then balls deep, no messing about. Panorama Monday night nine o'clock. Did you watch it? I did. What do you think? Was, from a boxing boxing fans' perspective, as it as it's been generally, I think the general consensus has not really shed anything new. No new angles on the on the subject as such. Um, I think you, you've covered it in a couple of other videos with Mickey and, and the fella from London, is it Michael? Yeah. Um, where, where this has been going on and the, the, the stories and the, and the things have been going on through the sport for a few years and there's no convictions going on. A lot of media talk, a lot of, well, we're now to a documentary on mainstream telly, so it does expose the story to a, to a wider audience. But it doesn't seem to have had the uh, the impact as it, as they possibly hoped by by putting it out on BBC BBC One. Yeah. Uh, looking at it, right? Looking at it from a former criminal's point of view, I think it were in bad taste. I do because the man's not been convicted of a single crime. He hasn't been arrested for these crimes. So how can that be? Right, and we have a court of law, don't we? They have a high court in Ireland and courts, crown courts and all that, kind of like us. I'm not sure if it... I think, is it a sheriff? Oh, that's in Scotland, didn't they? They have sheriffs up there, don't they? So I'm, I'm not, not sure the, the legal structure. Well, if it... Well, let's say you look at it from an English point of view in England. Because this is a worldwide thing they're saying. If it's in England, you're innocent till proven guilty, or you're supposed to be. So the man's not been arrested, not been charged, they not been on trial for anything, and he's got no criminal record. People want me to hammer him, to hang myself. No, they want me to say something outrageous, don't they? Because I'm not, I'm not really bothered. If he'd have got found guilty. And I got it, he'd have got it both barrels off me, wouldn't he? I'd have said what I thought. But he hadn't. He hadn't even been charged. So I think that it were in bad taste. They didn't tell us anything we already hadn't heard, but what I don't I don't I just don't get it, mate. Am I am I, am I a lollipop here or something? Am, am I am I missing something? He's not been charged with anything. I don't get it. What do you think, Simon? Uh, I think in the in the bo if you if you're following boxing online and, and you're a fan of the sport, you want to want to see the best fights being made. Yeah, and you want the whole point of MTK as an organisation is to manage and broker the best fights. Uh, have have they added value to the sport in doing that? Fighters are getting paid on time. So from a boxer's perspective. They've given a bit more security to these lads, yeah. Who, without fights, don't get a payday because they don't get any. They don't get any pensions. These guys, which is a which is a major flaw in the sport itself, as the governing yeah. bodies don't look after these guys whatsoever. Yeah. So they're providing something extra that's that's not there to the sport in a bit more uh, financial security. Um, so, are they brokering the best fights? We're not getting the best fights as fans, though, are we? No. That's, that's one of the underlying problems of, of following this sport for years is that we get a handful of fights over the years where we can say we've got the best two in the ring. Um, something that, that is being linked for later this year, but I don't think it affects MTK, is, uh, is Josh Taylor fighting Ramirez in May, potentially. But that, that's all in-house on um, on top rank, isn't it? Bob Aaron's yeah. boys. So that's an easy one for them to make. 
Um, as far as the as far as the documentary goes, there's no there's no there doesn't seem to be a case strong enough for uh, Daniel to be extradited back for 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 questioning or or for any trials. It's just it, yeah, it's, it doesn't it's not materialised into anything. Yeah. Yeah. Uh... Fetch him back to Ireland. Let fetch him back and put him on trial if they can. But if they can't fetch him back, it can't be that important. I don't know. Can't they extradite him from Dubai or something? The case clearly isn't strong enough, if there is yeah. a case. I thought they could so, get you from anywhere in the world if they had a strong case against anybody. That's my understanding of, the, of it as well. So this guy who's allegedly had people murdered drug running, money laundering and importing drugs, all heavy charges, but yet not got a criminal record and I can't get my head around it. Maybe I'm looking at, I shouldn't be looking at it from that point of view because there's obviously people who were emailing me and abusing me and saying things like, you don't know what's going on in Ireland and things like that. And, you know, seven or eight people have done that. Well, I don't, but we have to go on the letter of the law we're governed by the law, aren't we? The law tells us if we haven't got rules or the law, there'll be anarchy. So the letter of the law says he hasn't been convicted of a crime and he's 43 years on earth. But yeah, they're doing panorama programs about this guy. But yeah, I don't know. I don't uh, think it's good. I don't think it's put shown the sport in a good light. If anything, it's probably turned people off the sport now. Because people are now, they're probably damaging his brand as well, the MTK brand, because what parent's going to want to let the kids sign for MTK if, if, they, if they do come and get them all and nab them all from lock them up for conspiracy? Where does that leave all these boxers in contract, on contractors? Are they in limbo? I don't know, but let's see some arrests. If there's no arrest, I don't want to hear about it. That's just my opinion on it anyway. No, I... I... I agree. I agree with that sort of that summary, Russ. I don't. I don't think it's. There's been more, more bickering and um, people with their opinions on 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 the Twitter, on Twitter this week than there has with action from these cases. Do you see what I mean? People, people have been sort of linking things to to posts on Twitter and people with their opinions on Twitter linking one thing to the next thing. And, and yeah, people have been having bigger, <laughs> bigger twi Twitter battles than actual um, real-life face-to-face conversation. You mean, do you mean Billy Joe Saunders and all the rest of them? Yeah, everyone's been having their two, two pence worth. And, yeah, that, I mean, that, that's had a different angle and people have linked a couple of posts together. In terms of the, the Barry McGuigan and Lincoln, then uh, Ben Davison has been protecting Billy on on Twitter as well, and with his reputation, it's it's not not good. But I I seen I've seen the information. And they weren't posted directly after each other, and by all accounts, he does have a daughter. I may be wrong about that, so there does seem to be some genuine links to, to having a daughter in there as well, but. Obviously, one part of that puzzle is pretty blatant towards one of the contributors of the documentary. Yeah. Uh, Billy Joe is going to come out and defend his pal, isn't he? Daniel Kinnan, and that's what people do, don't they? It's, it's, uh, human beings are creatures of habit, and Billy Joe, we could predict this because I said to people, watch Billy Joe's tweets in next few days what watch it well certain people you know are going to come out who who were friendly with certain people are going to come out and say something but we haven't said we haven't heard anything from tyson fury have we no and i maybe that tyson's now got more of a management team behind him because you can clearly see with billy he likes to um manage his social media himself which might be not a good idea going forward for him his management company might need to look at that. They've got social media experts that can handle that that, uh, that part of his career for him. We need to see him boxing. He's a good boxer. and We haven't seen him box at his best level since the Lemieux fight. So that was a long time ago. 
Yeah. That was over three years ago, wasn't it? Yeah. Three, like well, 39 months ago or something like that. So, you know, it's like that's like an age in boxing, 38, 39 months. It's a age. It's an age in boxing. And, and look, three months in boxing, you can slip if you don't look after yourself. Now, Billy can't keep playing catch-up in between camps, so let's hope that he does fight Canelo. But is Billy Joe Saunders, this is what I wanted to ask you, is he being controversial on social media because a big fight's coming up to drum interest in it and play the villain while Canelo plays the good guy, the saviour of the sport. I don't know, but what do you think? I'm not sure if, if that's part of the the storyline on this this whole um, this fight. I'm not sure if, if it is that scripted. I'm not sure if it's just a case of Billy kind of being self-destructive on his own own reputation at the same time. I think yeah. sometimes there's those mistakes that come out from him and may, they're off the cuff, ill-judged decisions that he's made along the road. Um, I think yeah. if it, when he's fighting Canelo, I think he's going in at a disadvantage already fighting away from home. But to have only Martin Murray as your most recent fight going in with Canelo would have fought um, Callan Smith, then Yildirim, and then he'll go into Saunders. Yeah. It's it's obvious who's going to be in the better fighting Nick than uh, in that in that fight come May. Yeah, does Billy Joe beat Canelo at one sixty eight? Yes or no? Not for me. Well, I what what I watched against Murray is is not a sharp. He as doesn't he used carry to be. enough. Uh, yeah, yeah one sixty would be a, if he was back at one sixty and sharp like he was when he was fighting Lemieux. If he had rolled in from Lemieux into Golovkin or Canelo then, that was the time to nail it. Yeah. Yeah. I'd like, I'd like to be proven wrong. I want to be proven wrong. Yeah. Uh, okay, what about Callum Johnson against Bivol? Because Bivol's not fought in 14, 15 months. And he's been with Eddie for Ian four years, but he's just basically parked up, isn't he? This is true. Um, I'm seeing the latest news today that apparently he's going to fight twice this year. Bivol. Um, apparently so. That's is. It, I mean, he's been in with John Pas John Pascal and Joe Smith Jr. before. Um, he's not cut. I mean, he went to points with both of those fellas. But Callum Johnson needs needs a fight before going in with Bivol, I would say. He can't yeah. just go straight in. Not like what Callum Smith did with Canelo. You can't, you can't go in at the top level without any, uh, any activity, with all this lockdown and inactivity and expect uh, to come away with, uh, with any sort of good result. They, yeah. won't be, they won't be sharp. Yeah, but I think uh, I think but Bat is is the one at light heavyweight. Yeah, he's he's my favourite at that, at that way, and I've been saying for years that he would real deal ever since he won a gold medal in 07 in Milan, no Italy. He won world championship gold. I said he's going to be one to watch out for. B to B, or B Bitervia or whatever. I can't spell it that. In fact, people keep making accounts called B to B. We're putting photographs of me. Have you seen it? As the, Is that all the comments. It's that one where I'm like, "Look, oh, ah, get off me, you please!" For the smashing my teeth out of my mouth. <laughs> Not my teeth out, didn't you? Hey, I locked me up for three months, but I got out after two weeks. Judging chambers, and I won my retrial. But, but yeah. So keep putting them accounts up with my picture on. Keep growing the legend. Keep ringing up as well. We've had more phone calls from you today. Keep it up. <laughs> uh, okay, then. Natasha Jonas and Terry Harper has been voted Fight of the Year for Women's Boxing in Ring Magazine. But Matchroom and Sky don't deem it worthy of a rematch. What do you think to that? Yeah, that, that rematch is going to be avoided and dragged out for as long as possible. They will um, 
pursue the easy routes to a belt and more belts in that in that division for uh, Terry Harper. And uh, Natasha Natasha Jonas is what mid thirties now. Yeah, thirty six so, is she? Uh, let me just check how old she is a second. Um, I think she's 35, 36. If she if she's in her mid thirties now, they're going to hope for a few more. She's going to tick over maybe a year, eighteen months before they give the rematch. Yeah, she's thirty six now, mate. So. Yeah, I think uh, I think Terry well, Terry Harper's management team and promoter will look to uh, to avoid that one for a while. It looks like they're going to put a show on in Doncaster match room this year. I've been told Donny Rovers Football Ground. So, who would you say they'd put on there? Probably Terry Harper, Dave Allen, Josh Whale, Dempsey Whale, Jason Cunningham. Uh, Lee Appleby or Ian Appleby, whatever it's called, Appleyard, Appleyard, isn't it? Uh, yeah. Lee Appleyard. Uh, probably Anthony Tomlinson, Sheffield Kid, he'll go on there because he does tickets, he's undefeated. Uh, maybe Kid Gallard, I don't know. No, I don't think Kid Gallard. But I think they'll maybe put them lot on at Doncaster and maybe. It might be Katie Taylor coming to Doncaster this year when crowds are back to fight Terry Harper. Maybe. Would I like to see that fight? Yeah, but I feel Terry Harper's got unfinished business with Natasha Jonas because if she fights Katie Taylor, she'll get wiped out. You won't be able to run for two minutes against Katie Taylor. She'll hunt you down, I think. So that's what I think. But maybe it's good management from Steffi Ball keeping away from Natasha Jones because she got beat in that fight, clearly, didn't she? I thought so anyway. Yeah, it was a two, two three round winning margin Swing, from yeah. Natasha Jones. They gave it a draw. A way fighter got a draw and, it, and it's smelly what's happened. Smelly. And it leaves a bad taste in my mouth. Do you, do you think a show of that type in your... It, that's your local area. Do you think that would, would do well for the, for the punters? Well, they didn't do a thousand tickets. Well, they might put McDonald's on on show as well, Gavin and Jamie, but they never did a thousand tickets when Dennis brought a world title to that ground. It holds 10,000, that, that ground. They didn't do a thousand tickets. Dennis did his conquers on show. He had Chris Smedley from Sheffield, driving around Doncaster in a Citroen Malingo van with one of them big Atanoi things. You know, vote Labour, vote Neil Kinnock. Well, Chris had this thing and he was shouting, McDonald versus Seager, keep out stadium tonight, £20, all welcome. Something like that. Going round and round and round town centre. <laughs> How bad's that? But you've got to be innovative. And I think Dennis rolled the dice. They got Seager over here. They beat him. And he made history in Doncaster. But Jamie didn't cover him sending glory after that. So you've got a feel for Dennis there. But he's boxing, isn't it? Don't let your left hand know what your right hand's doing. But do I see him selling it out? No, I don't. They can spout as much drivel as they want about Katie Taylor. But I don't see them selling it out. But I could see them maybe doing... I don't know, it'd be a match room, wouldn't it? Maybe they might do five, 6,000 tickets. I don't know. Look, Eddie Hearn's capable of anything with all the platforms he's got, isn't he? But I don't know if there's that much interest in Doncaster... If Steffi Ball can't fill Donny Dome 1,500 tickets, what chances have he got at 10,000 seater? But let's see if they can do it. Would I like to see Terry Harper beat Katie Taylor? I hope she smashes her to bits. I don't like Katie Taylor after that Delphine Bassoon fight. I hope she smashes her, but she's not got that style to beat her, I don't think. you got one of them styles where you fight frightened, you know, where you run for your life. Like Steffi Ball used to fight on his back foot, frightened to death, not engaging. But I hope she beats Katie Taylor. But I'd like to see her fight Natasha Jonas because she doesn't seem to be getting a look in at the moment, does she? No, and 
it seems to be a similar trend for a certain stable uh, in Greater Manchester, doesn't it? Joe Gallagher is only what he's had Callum and Canelo. Um, I don't know how that worked out for, for him in terms of finances, but his fighters have not been active since the pandemic kicked in. We're pretty much, a, we're nearly a whole calendar year since all this kicked off. So um, he's got a good, a good range of fighters, including Natasha. So the other Smith boy, uh, Liam Smith, uh, Callum Johnson, th these, these fighters bring, um, Callum Johnson brings good knockout power as well. So to see him in the ring soon would be, would be good for the fans as well. Yeah. What about Mark Tibbs, Daniel Dubois, uh, Martin Bowers scenario? What do you make of that? There was a lot of um, a lot of uh, finger pointing and questioning of of the corner for Dubois in the um, the Joe Joyce fight. Um, personally, I think they should have pulled Daniel out before it was before he took the knee anyway. You could see that eye was was in a bad, bad way. Yeah. Um, that was a that was um, it was a nasty injury, but he didn't perform badly, Daniel, in that fight. I mean, it was a good competitive boxing match. Dubois, du, um, sorry, Joyce was very accurate in his work. Got his very his engine is is so strong. He just puts it on you constantly, yeah. and and Dubois didn't shame himself. But there was, it's not a surprise that he's left Bowers. And going to Tibbs, it seems like that could be a nice step up for, for Dubois. Dubois has got a good family of, of boxing people around him with his own family. His sister and his dad seem to know the sport pretty well. And obviously the Tibbs family is a good boxing family. And with, his, with Mark Tibbs' recent uh, exposure with Dylan White, a heavyweight, um, I think we could see good things for Daniel quite quicker than what we expected. Um, some of the news today that broke is saying that we could see him back in April. Yeah, that's, so that's good. Lot, that's a lot sooner than, is, than expected. I think Bricktop will be rushing him back though, won't he? Yes, blatantly. He's, um, he's not got many assets. I mean, he's got the Frampton show booked against Herring. But... Uh, there's no news on any yard activity. So, I mean, he wants, I mean, with Daniel, he needs, he needs a fight to get the confidence back. Yeah. But um, I can see him getting back in and, and then getting, he could probably get to European level quite quickly, Daniel. Yeah. Uh, well, Mark Tibbs, his family and Bauer's family, they're really close pals, you know, that they've known each other for many, many years. So, the I think with Martin being manager and Mark going to take over the training, uh, I think I think it's a it's a it's a good uh, match made in heaven. I think, uh, I thought Martin Bauer's got a lot of stick when the bar uh, were left in, but that's the nature of the beast, isn't it? In this game, in it, but I wish Daniel Dubar all the all the best. He's not one of them people that you see hanging out of the back of IFL. He just goes about his business, and he'll come good. Do you agree? I think so, and I think time's on his side to to make a plan on which belts they go after, because obviously we've got all the the talk of mandatories for the current champions, the Usyk. Um, Joyce situation, the Fury Joshua, all of that business. Uh, you got people like Deontay Wilder in the background who wasn't finished with his career. Daniel can plot a, plot a nice path to be to be involved with the next generation of, of the top boys. So he doesn't need to rush it. Pick the right opponents and then work his way in for for a shot down the line. Yeah. I don't. I don't think he's at risk of Joe Joyce hanging around in the game too long. I think Joe Joyce will we'll look to have maybe three or four fights more tops because of his age and where he's at. He's, he's got a, a title shot coming up or, a, or an interim title shot. So Joe might be his boogeyman, but I think Joe Joyce will be, I'll be out of the picture time Daniel's back, at, back towards the top of the pile. Yeah. 
I agree as well. Uh, let's have a look. Holyfield Tyson, three. Is it a done deal and is it an exhibition or is it a fight we are on a, on a professional bill? Well, I'm not saying confirmation of the type of fight, but it looks like it's starting to take shape. I wouldn't be surprised if it does happen. Um, it looked like when Tyson fought Roy Jones, he had to uh, fight within himself. Because it looks like he was giving Roy some trouble when he uh, when he did start to land some some heavy shots, um, but I think it will be similar nature to what we saw another exhibition fight. Yeah, I'll be surprised if they go f um, to full full pro rules for for those two. Um, Would you? Well, I'm not, it could take place. It could take place in that arrangement. But Holly, Hollyfield's taken some, some some batterings. Like he's taken a lot of hits over the years. Uh, I watched um, I watched the highlights of when he fought James Tony recently, and I, 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 for some reason I forgot he got stopped by James Tony. And I watched James the James Tony iced him. Yeah, um, there was a bit of size difference in that, and. Evander, Evander went on for a long time in his career, and I don't know again if he's um, if he's needing the dollar to top up his bank account again because he's been through financial troubles before. So it wouldn't I wouldn't be surprised if it does happen with with maybe full full pro rules. If we're getting if we're getting these YouTube fellas fight and get professional licenses in the states, why couldn't we see Tyson Holyfield with eight 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 three-minute rounds. Yeah, where Something does it? That structure. Don't forget, James Tony failed a cocaine test after he beat Oldfield. You remember that, don't you? Oh, I don't oh, remember oh, that oh, detail. I'm sure James Tony. People check on Boxer. I'm not sure what fight it was. I'm sure he won. Can you just have a little, little check now on your computer? I'm sure James Tony beat. Uh, it, it'll be, it won't be a green or a red, it'll be a grey because it ended up a no contest. If you go on James Tony boxing, yeah. I'm, I'm sure he won world title and failed the cocaine test, didn't he? Ah, uh, yes. He, he fought Hassim Rachman. That's it. That's it. They beat Oldfield fair and square, didn't he? But there were no belt online, were there? Yeah, that, that Hollyfield fight was back in 2003. And when did he beat uh, Rahman? That was the oh, five no something. contest. The no contest was quite a long time, five years after that in 2008. What does it, does it say on the thing what he failed? Drug test, yeah? WBA no, it just it? says no contest on box rack. Oh, well, if you have a look further down, there might, it might be a different fight then, because I thought it might have been a little bit before 2008. Uh, he did. He, he, he's uh, sorry. It's actually the drugs test one was John Ruiz. John Ruiz, WBA, yeah. wasn't it? Yes. Yeah, he had two a... no contests. Um, James Tony. The the one against Raffin was a no contest because of an incorrect referee call. So James Tony had gone down in history, like Roy Jones, from middleweight to heavyweight, wasn't it? Middleweight and then heavyweight champion. But he he, he got stripped, didn't he? Yeah, he's, he fought. He's fought on a long time, James Tony. But you can tell he's starting to suffer from the, uh, the the shots to his head over his career. His last fight was in 2017. Yeah, well, I know somebody who had a conversation with him right, a year ago, and I'm talking like Scooby Doo. You know yeah, I mean? and I think Evander could be on the way if he if he has a couple more fights, like. Like what? What we could see it seems to be a theme with the with the legends talk starting to take shape now in this in boxing. We could see more of these ex fighters from the um, early two thousand and nineties coming into some uh, sort of um, physical difficulties with the with the brain injuries. Where does it leave Glenn McCrory in all this? Well, where where would Glenn McCrory fight Holyfield? Because he's not got a profile in the states. I don't know. I, I, 
I, I think Glenn was just reaching out there for a bit of PR. I don't know. I don't see where they can fight him. I, I'd like to see him get a few quid, but I, Glenn McCrory, what is he, 57? Who wants to see him fight older for both pushing 60? Well, then again, I wanted to see John Fury against Mickey Theo and their similar age, aren't they? But Glenn McCrory's had his day, hasn't he? Yeah, didn't he retire early 90s, Glenn McCrory? Yeah. That's a long time ago. Holyfield shouldn't be coming back. He's had millions and lost millions. He used to put a million pounds on Russian roulette. He was addicted to gambling. Million dollar bets he was having. Glenn McCrory's last fight was in 1993. That's a long time. 28 years hard at ring. And and he's talking... Craziness. No. Craziness. I'm not having it. Craziness. It's craziness. Uh, anything else you want to add, Simon? Is there anything you'd like to talk about? Um, I think we've covered the, the kind of fresh news. I think I think the, the Taylor Ramirez fight could be one of the highlights of the year if that's yeah. pulled off. You remember when that's, I... Sorry, Bob. I think that's one of the fights we talk about, Matt, Matt fights getting made. I think the, the fortunate because it is in the same stable, we can see that made. And I, I do pick Josh Taylor to win that fight. Yeah. Do you remember when I said Josh Taylor beats Mikey, Mikey Garcia and I got abused? Well, they're not saying it now, are they? That was three years ago when I said that. Go back on my videos, August 2018. I told you all, I shook up the world. I told you that. Josh Taylor beats Mikey Garcia. Fuck, are you crazy? Not saying that now. Josh Taylor's pound for pound, are you? He's in everybody's pound for pound top 15. Out out of the fights that are coming up, the one that in February that I want to see actually happen is Ivan Isian versus Josh Kelly. I do, yeah. I want to see that fight. It's a good fight. It's a good season. World operator, world level operator against an up and coming kid who was probably British level, isn't he? Yeah, we, it, it's been, was it being cancelled four times? Three or four, yeah. Yeah, the, the schedule this year, it's not, it's not getting the juices flowing in terms of matchups yet, but hopefully we can, uh, we can see something confirmed that that. I mean, the first quarter of the year is not looking too good. There's not really strong competitive fights there. Yeah. But hope, hopefully, come spring, summer, we'll see some good good fights made. Yeah, hopefully. So, right then, it's quarter to eight, Friday night. Time to do a bit of training in the gym next door, and I'm going to go home. I'm going to try one of these from the gym Egg noodles. Is that a posh pot noodle? I don't know, apparently. Poison <laughs> duck, egg noodle. I don't know. It's uh, I'll only get three or four mouthfuls down and throat rest, but can't be asked making up, so I'll just screw it up. But and I'm sick to death of shakes now. You'll never know. But it's one of them things. I'm having a lot of fun here now. I've got my new computer. What do you reckon? Uh, going for it, aren't I? Like, Up a sound uh, studio now. Well, they're on about... Uh, I don't, you know when you buy a dozen eggs, they have them things, don't they? they don't, you can buy all proper gears to pin it all that, so I don't want to do all my pictures. But uh, I don't want to end up doing like a, a Rob Tebbert where he just got some egg boxes, spade and black. I don't know. I'm not going to go as far as them, but... We might do something, you know, or they're on about doing something. Next door. Sorry. That one's going to be a green room, so we can do our own, you know, where tech guys come and we can mess about. But it's all, it yeah. all takes time to get to that stuff, that sort of thing, doesn't it? It's all about cutting costs down, what we want to do. I mean, don't forget, this started out in the shed, didn't it, basically? Oh, Dennis's office, and I was doing a mint shed at weekend at home, so... It's come a long way, hasn't it? In, well, in, in 39 months, I've been at it. 
Well, it's about 1,260 odd videos. So I'm pretty confident in front of that camera now, and I don't know where. So it's we're going to take it to the next level now. Just things planned. So let's see. Well, thank you for coming on, Simon. Good luck. When's your, your girlfriend's? Uh, when's your baby? When's your baby? Your, your partner? Um, early May, late April. All right. So she'll be sat there now with uh, really strong double Gloucester cheese and gherkin brushy. Was it pickled onion? <laughs> Haywood's the first pickle to bite that. That's what women like. They was pickled onions and really strong cheese. So if you want to impress her, next time you go to the supermarket, get her that and she'll just sit with you. So that or forever rush her if you like when you're pregnant. <laughs> <laughs> we just had we just had the last of them from Christmas. <laughs> Only posh people have forever rush her. Don't you have daily daily uh, not daily meal? What are they call dairy milk? Oh no. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. Oh, you had them as well. You had that as well, have you? No, that was polished off a little while back. But the Ferrero yeah. Rocher, she's yeah, she's not a big fan of, of of chocolate. So I get to eat most of the chocolate. So it's uh yeah, we spread it out. Well, I spread it out since Christmas. So good man. Yeah, <laughs> into <Good>. February. <laughs> All right, this time. Well, listen, you take care. God bless, mate. Have Cheers, pal. One. Cheers, mate. Bye, bye. -bye. Oh, that was Simon from Bristol. I like Simon. He's uh, well spoken. Uh, he always he always gives a different a different opinion to mine. I'm a bit rough around edges, aren't I? A bit a bit of a rough diamond. But I think that Simon is well spoken, and you can see he's a bit of a gentleman. So I enjoyed that. Uh, I think that's about it, really. We haven't really got many Zooms booked in at the moment. That's not good, is it? No, no Porky, don't put me down. We don't want to talk about Panorama. Porky, don't ask me about Panorama if I come on. Ten minutes later, oh, Porky, I'm going to get a miss. Our losses not very well. Yeah, okay. Look, well, it is what it isn't. Be your own people. Have an opinion. We live in a democracy, don't we? All right. Peace out have a good weekend don't forget to like and subscribe and share the video all you people who are not subscribing and liking my video don't tell me you're hardcore get off your ass press that like button get off your ass get your phone type a comment if you think it's a good video put good if you think it's bad don't comment peace out <laughs> you liked that one, didn't you? Right, first of all, I just want to say thank you very much for liking and subscribing. It means a lot to me. Because uh, we're on this journey together, aren't we? So, anybody got any ideas for the channel, fire them over to me. PorkyCorner at mail.com. Alright? Shout out to Innovation Alloys and South Yorkshire Packaging. Alright? Don't forget to subscribe, keep on trucking. <laughs>